Reserve All right, how's it going, everyone? Dota Asia Championships 2015, what many are calling TI 4.5 with a disgustingly big $2.2 million and on the rise for prizes up for grabs here. And we got a wealth of teams and a huge opportunity for most to kind of make a name for themselves and also get that invite to the big event later this year, TI 5. This is intense, man. I have been eager and ready for this one. And to lead things off, we got to make a way through the wild card, where we're going to have teams battle it out just to make it into the tournament itself. We have two spots open. The other four, they got to go here. So we got a nice mixed matchup here of different teams, uh, including Wings Ten Gaming and Energy remaining. Pacemaker, the two amateur Chinese Dota teams that made their way Five through the Dota 2 remaining. Secondary Pro League. And uh, because they got the top two spots, they were able Reserve to make it time. here. Huge opportunity for them. Also, we're going to have Hyper Glory Team, Speed Gaming, Power Rangers, and of course, Na'Vi. Who'd have thought that things would come to a point where Na'Vi have to battle their way just to make it into the tournament? But here we go. And uh, of course, bringing you all the English coverage for this event is Beyond the Summit with partnership of Dota Cinema. So of course, you can get the other two games happening simultaneously over on Beyond the Summit 1 and Dota Cinema's channel. And then, of course, coming from my own personal studio here in New York City in the tiny 400-square-foot corner where I will not be able to get too loud or my neighbors will get pissed, but the hype will still be real. I trust you. And I got a nice variety of co-casters who are going to be joining me. They've offered their gracious services to be able to truck through the overnight hours. And I couldn't have asked for a better co-caster to lead things off here. My, my first Dyer. gentleman, of course, is going to be a, a former Pot and Bottom Dyer Team, team Dignitas EG. Maybe Team Dog, you might have heard of those guys. Navi US, and most recently Team Fire. And a TI3, TI4 competitor, I got Mr. Green Dream himself, Giannis Fogged. Are you there, buddy? How you doing? Wow, what an intro. Do you like Ten that? Seconds Tell me that was like probably it. one of your best intros. Come on. That was, that was good, dude. Not bad. Not too shabby. Nice. Five nice. How you doing, man? Remaining. Doing good? I don't really know anything about these teams. I didn't, yeah. I didn't do my homework Radiant this time. Uh, you know what? Back. If you even wanted to do the homework, there would not be a lot to look at. We've had stats men throwing paperwork and numbers our way and we get this big beautiful package of stats and I'm like scrolling through I'm like okay that's cool that's cool but my first matchup is uh, Wings Gaming and Pacemaker what, what can I learn about these guys they don't have anything on them these guys have probably played a combined like 12 matches Five so they're two amateur remaining. teams that have you know obviously been given a huge opportunity here being in the top two uh, Wings Gaming uh, I believe ended up uh, 17 and 1 and uh, Energy Pacemaker were 13 and 5 Wings Gaming though Four of their members are actually <laughs> from the previous uh, speed gaming group. Uh, that's ZY, ZRD, JDH, and ZYP. But, and you're probably looking over the list and you're not seeing any of those names, they have recently changed their names around. It was like Blink Beyond, Inori. I don't even see those names here, Fog. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> we got two teams Ten that are seconds pr remaining. pretty much the mystery squads, but we're, we're hoping to maybe see some upsets here. I Five mean, seconds who knows, remaining. man? Pacemakers could take a game off Navi. How wild would that be, huh? It's possible. It's time. possible. I, and it looks like a lot of these teams are... Or I've heard the hype about uh, at least Wings, so I'm excited to see yeah. what we got in store. Here. It's pretty safe to say that they're the better or Radiant most people's favorite of ban. these two teams coming into it. So we, we get to find out where they stand at least between each other. So we don't really know what their usual flavor of pickups are. Right now it seems... A bit funky here. The first pick, Naga Siren from Wings Gaming. I guess we don't really know if they like to run it as a like true Ten core Radiance. Remaining. You know, we've seen time and time again, or if it's going to be a funky Five support. Clockwork remaining. second pick that's pretty intriguing, passing over other options. But both these bands on both <sighs> sides are pretty around the offlane, already getting rid of that tide and bat, plus Bristle's pick. already been taken out. And then for Energy Pacemaker, they lead up with Vengeful Spirit, who's been the most popular pick <laughs> pr pretty much across all regions. And they followed up with the Dying Swag Team. Pick. It is on Radiant side. But now they get a Viper. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting lead off here. So according to a friend I have, mm -hmm. they actually said that Wings were 17-1 and one in the qualifiers and mm -hmm. EP were 13-5 and five in the qualifiers. But Wings right now are having two stand-ins. So Ooh. ZP and Han are their stand-ins. Yeah, when uh, Gods was talking about them a bit in the pre-show just before this, he said some of these, you know, the speed Ten gamers are remaining. younger players, like 16 years old. And uh, they even had a moment where they Five had Burning as a stand-in to help them out, and they had a little bit of success there. 
but uh, because of their young age, they've Reserve been kind time. of limited to what they can really participate in. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some of them had to pull out. Pretty bad time to have a stand-in. Given that these teams, they're not walking away empty-handed. If, if these teams Doctor. even lose all matches and they end up being uh, one of the teams team tied pick. out for 17th place, they still got like $11,000 and rising with their 1% share. So it's, it's nice to know that everyone's going to be getting a, a little bit of the pie, even if it's just the, the bitter crumbs. I, mean, I think they're just... I would think I think people would just be happy to be there. Yeah, of course. I mean, and I don't know if you had the opportunity to look over the the tournament format. I actually really like it a lot with how they're building everything up, the group stages, and how Ten they're bracketing. Uh, Cinderin believes that this is probably something you it expect. It seems with CI5. really smart. Yeah, yeah. no more seconds. of that probably copy stuff. Yeah. Got to get rid of that. So it, it seems like it's going to be a good matchup here. Reserve so uh, we get to lead off with these two uh, two groups that we don't really know a lot about. Which Doctor is going to be picked up third here for Wings Gaming? Of course, you get the lockdown from Clockwork. Could set up for a, you know, a fairly decent Death Ward, and they get that little bit of extra sustain. But I'm curious to know if they're going to be Disruptor. building around more of a stall strat to allow this Dying Naga to flourish, pick. if it is indeed going to be a, a core Naga. But fourth pickup here for Pacemakers is going to be the Disruptor. I'm not seeing a direct counter for Disruptor. Usually it's against something like a Wisp or maybe a Panda or a Brew that needs the Insta Silence. But overall, he's, he was picked up a lot, Star Ladder Man. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it was. I I just I wish I could figure out what these guys are gonna pick, but I, I really don't know anything about them, so it's it's really just all about the popular yeah. picks and they're Ten kinda they're kinda sticking remaining. to it. It was a little bit out of order, you know, picking the Shadow Fiend and the Naga and Clockwork all Five early, but seconds remaining. Just that the, all these teams have such unique drafting styles, and to, to get yeah. a couple Reserve of teams that you don't really know what that style is, you don't know if they're gonna be one of those face rush kind of a teams, if they're gonna be a team that goes more uh like late game, four protect, one, uh, if they like to... Everyone has their lot. own style, you yeah. know? So we get to find out here, first and foremost. The, the, the thing is, is these are best of ones also, and uh, you only get that one chance. It's not like you can feel one of these teams out and uh, learn how they play. That's where you can get the upsets. When a team like Navi comes in and there's oh, so God. much to look up on Navi and even like Power Radiant Rangers and Hyper team Glory band. Team, you can figure out what they're going to be coming in with. But when you're looking at Wings and Pacemaker, you have no idea what to expect, and they can surprise you, take you out of your comfort zone, and next thing you know, you're down a game, <coughs> and you could find out that the reason you didn't make it into the main Dire stage was bad. because of that one game. So you Yeah, it looks like the, uh, the meta didn't really hit these guys too hard just yet. Yeah, I don't see a single troll axe or jug here. Yeah. Where have they been living? Definitely been living in a cave. Where's the axe? Where is that jug? Where's that troll... Puck was popular in the CIA Especially with the Naga though. first pick, right? Like, all three of those heroes are extremely good Five versus Naga. Remaining. Maybe the, the Jug is like, eh. But the other two are quite strong versus the Naga in general throughout the majority Five of the game. That's the risk remaining. you take when you're pulling out what looks like now the core Naga. That early. Radiant you're just allowing an opportunity pick. for teams to kind of build around that. Either it's changing the tempo of the game to really push on this Naga before she even has the chance, or just having more of a direct counter. One of the funniest counters I ever saw to Naga, by the way, was like a, a Warlock play because the Rock is just so freaking long-ranged that you can also take it through the BKB, and when she thinks she's going to be able to get away, you're always going to be right there to kind of drop down that big ball, but... They uh, already got their supports, of course. Shadow Fiend, Viper, Force more range, range too you know, coming up for EPG. Uh, why not get the troll to round things out here? I suppose, Five seconds but they remaining. need an off laner unless they're yeah. planning on doing some sort of crazy aggro on this radiant side. Drow, let's see a drow right now. Oh yeah, that's it. All that range. Mm. That would be really that. weird, though. The, I mean, it adds the extra pushing and siege kind of objective gaming. Get her a couple of wraith bands, and next thing you know, you're taking towers, and you know that uh, wings gaming are probably not going to look to take big fights. And if they do, more than likely, they're going to be going at it four versus five without Naga yeah, there. I'm, so I'm still like very, I'm just lost at this start of these drafts. Like I don't know, <laughs> maybe they haven't been watching the recent games or stuff. Just how people have been, but but even pandas untouched and pandas. Yeah. Highly rated just in general. There he okay. is. Oh, there we go. All there right, he cool. is. Yeah. They were waiting for it, you know, and they're just holding it. They were, they were listening to this stream. They're like, yeah. oh, yeah. We forgot about those This heroes. hero is in every single pub. I forgot about this hero. Well, I mean, after all, this is, a, this is a big deal tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see a whole new meta again develop here. I mean, do you no, have any feeling Broken that heroes are broken, man. Come on. You think so? I, I've heard murmurs of certain special players playing funky kind of very, very different. I'm uh, just excited for some some Bloodseeker because I know Ten the Chinese have been or just in general. He's been all been about playing that. it. Oh man! Yeah, and I'm, I'm I've been trying to make Five the hero work. Remaining. I don't know. Yeah. Support. It's really right. weird. <laughs> Both roles. Both. Yeah. You know, we have a Death Prophet. Haven't seen this in a while either. Yeah, yeah. She was obviously all the rage at uh, TI4 with their 
you know, definition of face rush, get get towers down immediately. And then, of course, that prompted the whole change where you get the insta-glyph after taking tier 1s, and yep. then we didn't see a whole lot of that pushing strat with, like, the, the Razor and Death Prophet. But they grab it here, uh, which is a bit... I don't know, it seems a bit different than when you have a Naga. I feel like one of them, it's, like, happy to take it late. The other one's, like, let's get a lot done. May, I, do you think that she offers a bit of space creation to allow Naga to do what she wants? And now yeah, that I think see, so. Uh, but you also have an axe now on the other side. He's going to get that Blink Dagger, and he's he's going to want fish. He's going to uh, he's gonna hunt her out. A decent DP player, though, can, like, you know, you can win your lane, and then you can dominate early on. So that kind of gives you the space for the Naga. Remaining. You press your towers early, you focus attention on the DP. It could be pretty decent. Five sec but you have to be careful with the swap and the glimpse and all that. So at the same time, it goes both ways. And I want to mind everyone, I don't want to jinx this right now. Instead, TP to the bottom lane. Don't battle. say it. Go right there. Is you don't. You I know what you're gonna say. say it. Don't say it. Okay. I won't say it. We'll just hope everything's smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for smooth casting. <laughs> I did it. So uh, as we get underway here, just the first match to lead things off here. We got three matches happening at the same moment here as we develop and go on through the wild card and find out what two teams are gonna make it all the way. We got Energy Pacemaker, one of the funkiest team names I've ever heard of. Suns fan was absolutely opposed to it. He said it was ridiculous and not even funny. But uh, I don't know. With their logo, it seems pretty legit. We'll see how they work things out. I'll lead out your introductions. And mind you, I don't really know these players or how they pronounce their names, so I'm just going to do my best. It's L-E or I-E, I guess, playing your Vengeful Spirit. we got Luffy, who's probably the more signature standout player that might be recognizable from the former battle. Speed Gaming team playing your Viper. we got IT yep. playing Disruptor. we got Fan. Uh, is playing your Shadow Fiend, and uh, two, I guess I'll call him, is going to be playing your Axe. Fog, if you wouldn't mind, tell me about the uh, the winged boys. Who, me? Oh, no. Please. All right. Come on. I'll, I'll give it a shot. All right, we got uh, we got Dengdu up on the Naga Siren. We have uh, Blink up on this Death Prophet over here. Go probably going toward the mid lane. We have uh, Han going toward the off lane with this Clockwork. With the TP, like you were saying, getting that those nice cheeky wards down, blocking the pull early on. We have, you know, JDH playing the Witch Doctor up in that top lane. And we have, yeah, yeah. ZP. ZP. We'll go with ZP. I like that. We'll go with, Z we'll go with ZP. All right, we'll ZP, ZP playing yeah. the Ogre yeah. Magi. Yeah. We don't know a lot of information. As you said, there's a couple stand-ins as well. So, you know, just making the best of it. But hopefully these uh, players with their funky names will look to make a name for themselves with maybe some big upsets. But now between these two teams, the two amateur teams, we got to find out. What to expect here? This is their big debut on pretty much one of the biggest stages in Dota you can ask for. So no pressure, boys, as they lead things out. Disruptor and Viper to zone back this clockwork. He is going to be in for a hell of a time. They might not even need to have all three here. Vengeful Spirit, you can see already venturing about, probably going to go with the uh, counter. And is going to get it here if she scouts it out. And then uh, can always go for a gank. She has a smoke already in hand. So good bottom lane for energy pacemakers to set up. Clockwork's going to have a lot of trouble. She's being efficient as well, you know, she missed the ward at first, so she just used Howl to, st or Wave to stack the big camp. So at least it's a stacked up camp, and now she will find that sentry, but there is no pull for another minute, so Clockwork will be able to find his level 2 fairly soon, as he is blocking the creeps into the side with the OP cogs. Yeah, nice benefit. I know on your team, Mike, you know, it's Mike after all, he, he tends to just favor a lot getting the offlaners that can always pull back and go into the jungle if, if just things go a bit too crazy in the lane, whether it's your Batrider, whether it's your Doom. At least Clockwork has the benefit of being able to block the wave a bit with those cogs, but it's going to be a hard time. Getting CS is probably pretty much a non-factor early on, but as long as he can kind of get close enough to get some of that XP, he'll dip into the regen if he has to, but you know this will allow a lot of space for Luffy on his Viper to build up some quick farm. He already has the early ring of protection. I would, I would imagine that maybe a mechanism would be something for him to strongly consider this. Season. Yeah, they're still they're doing a really good job of like trying to zone out the clockwork as best as possible. He's still level one. Venge stacked up both or tried to stack both camps with the te or with terror again, but only got the big camp there. But still stacking for the shadow fiend while the pull wasn't up. Now pulls up. They're gonna be able to pull, get XP on the Venge while the disruptor and viper just try to zone the best they can. The good thing is clockwork will get some XP, but Axe is getting little to none. Yeah, and we're looking at the op opposite side of the world here. Axe has got one CS. I suppose he's got that one up on Clockwork, but just a fresh level two. 
can't really get very aggressive in this lane. Just going to have to play it super patiently and just hope that Wings can give a little bit to him. But this is going to be a lot for Naga to get that head start. Hasn't really ventured off into getting any sort of side items. You can see how much gold she can pocket up and see how tempted she'll be to blitz forward towards that relic or not. You can see already, Axe trying to get close to maybe get some spins in towards these creeps while you know JDH wants to keep him back. But here we go. Look at this first aggression somewhat. Rotation here. It's been a calm start, but ZP is scouting back and above here to see maybe if anyone's going to be lingering about. But we are going to have an early pause. So, you know, scouting things out. This is all happening live. All these teams are in Shanghai, so hopefully the delays aren't going to be too long. But maybe just a bit of a warm up. But as far as the early laning phase fogged, how you feeling? One side getting a little bit better than the other out of it? I was thinking that the clockwork was going to get better, but the lane is actually terrible for him. I don't know what happened. He didn't use his cogs properly or something and he's forced into a situation where he got literally zero creeps under the tower so he's got no farm he's got very little uh, money at all you know, any XP or anything and he's not he doesn't have a recovery situation whereas the axe okay he, did, he got a little punished early on but axe always has a recovery and he's getting a couple CS he's putting pressure on and he's just getting XP in general yeah Hasn't been bullied enough that he can just pull out from the lane altogether and go to the jungle. He's at least got a little bit going for him, but things on him. Mid lane, though, here's your first gank. ZP jumps in, gets off the stun and the slow, but he'll be eating a lot of damage on the way out. Fawn just simply throws out the raise. They even bring in the disruptor. Oh, the glimpse. It's level two. It's got some decent range. They're able to pull back the DP here. And she's Misses now a raise. Pressure in. Oh, Fawn has to wait. Gets the raise off. He's going to attack. They get her down, but here comes Vengeful Spirit. One HP. Oh, he walks to the high ground. He's barely Dying alive here. He wants attack. this kill, but the speed is the same. He finally gets it in. Walks back. Fire Blast. They trade. It's he all over it. the place. It's also Axe went down in the top lane. We went from so quiet to an immediate three for two trade in advance for Wings. Wow. Oh, man. If the, the Shadow Fiend actually panic bottled while he was being attacked, if he had waited and actually gotten his bottle off while he was at a safe distance, I'm pretty sure he would have lived there. So a little bit of a misplay there and ends up costing his life. Misplays can happen, though. I mean, I would have to imagine the nerves, especially for a team, these two teams, who really don't have a name for themselves. Now they're given this opportunity to really have that opportunity, you know, to be able to move forward and get some huge money and maybe get some sponsorships. Maybe having the opportunity to get the opportunity. Yeah, I love opportunities. I'm sure they do too, man. <laughs> Turning that wings into a real Red Bull sponsorship. Who knows, right? There you go. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised. We might see misplays here and there, even from some of the best teams. I mean, you agree, right? Nerves. Do you think they're a factor at all when you get to a platform like this one? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You, you would be a hard coach. Oh, Shadow Fiend, yep. Steps back, he's two. It's a raise in. As far as CS, he's 17 and 5 to Death Prophet's 20 and 5, relatively even, but you can already feel the, the pressure building up as he supports her, looking to get a bit more frisky. And as I say that, I look over, got the smoke. So shift towards mid lane here. Disruptor. He's, uh,. Got the glimpse still at level 2, so it's not too hard to set up. But they have eyes on Blink. They do have Ogre behind. He's moving forward. Thunderstrike gives the vision. He just immediately gets the invis. But Ogre might put himself in trouble. Nope, they do get that glimpse regardless. Pull back that Prophet. Magic Missile is already there. They might trade one for one. Mid laners. Fawn goes down first. They do end up getting the Death Prophet. Courier's just sitting there in the middle, almost going to go down. It will go down. Oh, they go and, for uh, it. Now, yeah, targeting. Wow. And they get Vengeful Spirit. And they turn this back. ogre is going to be ogre level. This, just extremely over leveled at this point. He's, yeah, he's getting so much of all this action in the mid lane. Just kind of trucking on through there for most of the kills. He's almost level six. That's six minutes in for a support ogre. Yeah, he's having a pretty great time. Clockwork not having a great time, like I said, and Axe getting that recovery period. He cleared up majority of that big stamp, not the big creeps, but yeah, still. He's able to pick up a lot of farm, he's going to find his levels, and yeah, Clock's, clock's just going to be really under farm, for sure. Yeah, guy getting that level 6 hook shot that maybe can look to get involved on some of this action. Well, even Not even the easiest heroes to go on, too. Like, you know, Disruptor, he just glimpses you away, Venge is pretty tanky and neat, so... Venge with a swap, Song's going to be a problem later on. Venge is almost 6 as well, look at this. Yeah. He supports. Pays off to get aggressive and gank early and go for those objective kills. They get it done. Oh, the chat, the chat said the over ogre is ogre leveled. 
surprised I, like I didn't that think one. of that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't either. I'm kind of disappointed. No, I got, it's a warm-up. It's a warm-up. Puns will come. Don't worry. Okay. You'll get sick of it. Right. You'll get sick of it. But uh, you got to remember also the courier went down during that exchange. Dyer's going to be without a courier. Yeah, it's pretty. It's big. It actually makes up for the two kills that they're missing. Yeah, so the pacemaker boys were able to get a little bit of something there for that tussle. Luffy in the bottom lane. Got power treads already. The Bassy online. You can see that ring of regen for the first step towards an eventual mechanism for the extra bit of sustain. Viper one of those heroes who loves to take a licking and keep on kicking. All that poison. So, that'll be relatively good for now. Just IT kind of waiting on the side to see if Clock will overstep his boundaries at any point. Pings it out now. And they think about making a go. It's level 3 glimpse. Oh, so close. Actually, he was briefly in range, but Vision must have been just on the cusp. Couldn't get it right there. Pretty calm so far, though. We've had a little bit of action in this mid lane, but other than that, Ooh. the other lanes are chilling out. No. Bench has to throw out the stun as she gets her path crossed over by Clockwork here as they're both scouting out the 8 minute rune. Clock wants it, man. I haven't gotten anything all game, damn it. Takes the DD. They don't go for it, but here comes Fan. And he gets a nice little KS right there with the raid. Certainly love that. They get something more there. Meanwhile, nearby Axe is looking at a nice big old stack right here. Top tower oh, going down though. While this axe is just farming away. Go with the Snaga. He's got 1500 gold on the rise. Can't forget about her. Sleep on Naga. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That's something I really dislike about uh, a lot of offlaners. They just they just kind of give away their offlane like that. I feel like you should never like, just give away your offlane tower like that. You should be trying somehow to pull the creeps off it because losing your tower is like pretty devastating. It gives just give you it does give you a nice place to farm if they don't pull the lane back. But if they pull the lane back, you just kind of lose out entirely. A lot of people feel the radiant offlane is easier as well. The benefit of that side camp to pull with. But it just seemed like Alex, Alex, a Axe was not having the opportunity to really work with that pull and try to get that creep equilibrium, creep equilibrium rather closer to himself. So I guess just opting instead to blitz forward and getting that blink dagger, which is not doing too bad. He's 1900. He'll have it soon, and then they will probably look to go on the war path at that point and follow it up with maybe a couple of objectives here and there. But speaking of which, touch base with Death Prophet, who's only level eight. Did level up the exorcism already, but has yet to really unleash the fury of her ultimate on getting any sort of towers. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Ooh, they really want to get a hold of this clock. Dyer's game, middle tower is still yeah. trying to get that level six, man. The struggle continues. This axe is gonna have a really early blink, though. This is the really good thing that's coming up for EP. About 50 gold away from it, he's gonna be level eight once he has it, and he's gonna be ready to just make a gank if he decides to go for it, which I'm pretty sure he will. And actually, oh, Luffy did not go for the mech, like you were saying. He's actually picking up a vitality booster right here. Denied. Interesting. So maybe for now, reliable vitality booster. See where he takes it from there, but this pushes him up towards the 1k HP pool, which uh -oh. is early yeah, on. I see some lines being drawn. Yeah, this Luffy is might be overstepping his bounds, but he knows something's up. Dyer's middle tower is under lines attack. Lines are drawn. That's serious business. Got to get the X's and O's in order and be able to make oh, the Oh, here they come. Here it he comes. Goes back in. Get a stun. Rocket. Hogs, death board. Nope, not going to be happening. But Circle Car is going to be there. Oh, they don't have enough damage. They He's going to kill everybody. That fight booster. Uh -oh. it. And now they're going to lose two. Double dunk action happening triple here. Kill right here. Two gets two dunks. Can we get three? Oh, yes, we can, Fog. That's a triple As kill. As he gets the blink. That's that's like best case scenario. Yeah. You get your blink. Oh, look. I got my blade mail, basically. Jesus Christ. And now they have the mid tower. Given top lane, Nagas, you know, doing Naga things, making pushes happen, hasn't really added a lot to the tier 2, but is finding her own way to get a farm here. 3k now, which isn't too shabby, but, you know, perfect. Axe getting that is absolutely It's just perfect control. timing for the Axe, like, yeah. uh, they had the kill for sure on the Viper once they do the Witch Doctor ulti, but Axe just went right on the Witch Doctor, so, no more Death Ward for you, and they don't have enough attack. damage to kill anybody there, and yeah, you see what ends up happening. Triple Dunk. We'll look for that one later in the highlights. That is a serious start to boost forward the energy pacemaker boys. And they would certainly Dyer's love to keep the game in more of a high-tempo fashion. To not risk Naga getting a lot later on. At this rate, doing very well. The snowball well built up. Getting ready to roll down that hill. And right over the wings getting Dyer's through. But we'll see if they can use those wings to attack. fly somewhere else. This disruptor now even with arcane boots. And now level 6. So you got that stack storm at use here. But also I have to say, Death Prophet... Relatively quiet this game so far. It does have the phase boots trying to get a hold of the Yules, and that would certainly help out a bit, but I don't know. It feels like 
the four-man squad that Wings are going to have to work with outside of Naga is not going to be that potent. Clockwork's been pretty underfarmed and having a struggle in his off lane. He does bang, you know, fi finally managed to get level six, but I just don't know how much confidence I would have in the four-man group to get something done. Hey, Naga's in on the action now. It oh, like comes a big flank right now. Yeah, they find the Naga. Uh oh And Static Storm going to be dropped. And she will go down. Hook shot coming in. Looks going to send her promptly back in. When it goes nice out, pass. this is going to be a turn back. Yeah, Witch Doctor. Very nice setup right there. And we're going to see Venture Spirit get blasted down from that carry-on swarm. Nicely done from the link. They make it a two-for-one trade. Even though they do lose their Naga, they're going to put the ship forward and use the remainder of this exorcism to try to get this tier one as well. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Here comes that. They got their own trade in that top lane, and it looks like they're not going to be able to finish off that tier one. So, uh, I came out about it. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, it looked like it was going really well for EP, but yeah, Cask fighting in the jungle, you know, it's just going to bounce every single time between all amongst you, so you're going to pay if you do these little ganks like that, especially if you're fighting without your mech hero, which was the Shadow Fiend and, you know, the Viper, the two beefy heroes. They were pushing the top lane, and yeah, Viper went for a Vanguard. Yeah, so mech going to be for Shadow Fiend, which is oh, very oh, common at this point. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Raise one more. Yeah, wow, Witch Doctor, no chance right there. Pays the price for putting down that sentry ward. Now a smoke follower. Max gonna be waiting in the corner pocket, hoping for that jump in. We'll see if he gets the opportunity. Ogre's there. Ogre's pretty big though. It'll take a lot of muscle power to bring down. Can they do it? They follow the magic missile. Preemptive kinetic field, but we'll lock him there with the earn out. There's the dunk, and they do drop the ogre. Nice pick for them as they'll follow back and try to add some pressure onto this tier two. As Naga continues to farm in the top lane and even clockwork elsewhere in the world. Energy pacemakers. Keep building up on this, getting a lot out of these fights. Now going for objectives. It's looking like a game plan that's unfolding very nicely. Yeah, Naga's Radiance is coming out a bit too late. I mean, she went for the Aquila and everything, which is good, but now it's delaying the Relic too much. It's 14 minutes, Relic is just going to be coming out. But, you know, like I was saying before, the Clockwork had a miserably terrible game, and now, yeah, EP sees their opportunity. They know. Oh, Naga doesn't have anything at all. We can just go high ground, and that's what's gonna end up happening. They, wings just don't really have enough to, to defend this. They can glyph, they can bait a little bit of time, but... And if they even try to go on the offensive, maybe using a Radiant's song to get a big team set up, what do attack. they really have to follow through? It's not like they have the benefit of Disruptor where you can get a beautifully laid Static Storm and, or anything like that. They just are gonna have to make Radiant's the best of the situation. Enough sustain here. Solutions. Yeah. Oh, Venge might go down. Ooh, ooh. Be Naga wants He's it. going in for it. Oh, Soft. they used to sleep. They don't have any, like, good AoE, though. Maybe they have the cogs. All right, we got a nice DP. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. This is a big one. They need to make the best of it. They get that kill. Venge for Spirit Sack going to drop the Death Lord. The Death Lord, baby. Oh, there yeah. It, it rips through the team. They drop three. They lose no one. They're going for four. They're going for five. They take down Luffy. And that's the defense that Wings needed to soar back into this one, man. Very really well played shot. by the Clockwork and the Witch Doctor. Getting the kegs, the cogs, and the casks just bouncing between it all. They got end up getting a really nice fight, and that's that should basically be Naga's Radiance. I didn't think they'd actually be able to get such a good combo off, but the Shadow Fiend's mech was already used. He couldn't get an opportunity to get the Requiem off because of the cask and the cogs, so... Yeah, a bit of a misposition overextension there by EP, and Wings just capitalizing on it. I guess the... Uh Curse can go the other way. I was questioning what kind of setup they would have if they tried to make an engagement leading off with the song, but they disperse the, like, okay, you got to get over there. You get the cogs down right there. We'll have the, the ward plopped right here. We'll get the snipe there. And it actually worked out very, very nicely there for Wings. So that creates some Radiant's extra time, at least 10 attack. minutes easily before, I'd imagine, the pacemaker kids are going to be able to add continuous pressure across the river. So with that time, they're going to step back, build up their farm, itemize towards the next level. And Ultimate Orb here for Shadow Fiend. Is he blitzing towards a Scotty directly, I think? Hmm. Extra bit of stats, I guess, certainly wouldn't be too shabby. But an interesting grab nonetheless. Axe does, of course, have his Blade Mail. And uh, for Vengeful Spirit, it looks like she's going to have a Dust at the Ready couple of those support goodies, nothing too crazy. And, and of course, Luffy already got that uh, Vanguard, and he's going to complete out the Crimson Guard, given that uh, what's-his-face already has the mechanism. I suppose it's a good grab. So a lot of tank happening here on the side of EP. But 
We'll see if Radiance they can take the next Middle fight. Tower Looks like they're going to go and finish out at least the tier twos. Yeah, Wings just need to really stall the game now. Um, it, it'll still be a bit difficult. I, I don't really like this Death Prophet pick. They're into a single core lineup versus kind of like a triple core. Because I, I, I consider X kind of like a core hero. Because he's just so ridiculous. I think Yoki would agree Radiance with that. Tower yeah. Is under attack. yeah. Yeah. He Radiant would be structures are fortified. The lead carry half the time. Now, as they pressure bottom lane, eliminating the outer towers, this also creates a bit more space if they wanted to try to sneak a Roche. It's not like they have the middle tower, tower has to fallen. get involved. So Dyer's now they can control the map a bit more attack. and try their best to restrict a bit of that farm. Meanwhile, mid lane, bottom tower has fallen. get that tower. It wasn't denied, right? It doesn't look like it. Radiant's nope. middle tower and, uh, is under attack. Then they pull back, so let's see. Pings out towards Roche Pit. It looks like Wings feel that maybe EP could be going for it next, and they want to scout it out. Oh, Long nice hook jump. shot on Disruptor. Yeah, catches, but that glimpse will send him back. He drops his own stack sword, trying to save his own hind. Might not be good enough, it won't be. So for sure, for now, oh, no, Luffy. In. Death Ward to the high ground. Luffy comes in for the backhand side. Trying to go for Witch Doctor, but the heal. He'll be fine. One last right click will take him down, but Luffy will gain his own life. Swap back saves him. Nicely done from Vengeful Spirit. Jeffy comes in, gets Yules up immediately. Now Axe, big jump, dunk one, dunk two. Catches the both of them. And now the fight turning back towards GP's favor. Moving forward, Raze is going to connect. And they take him down. Vengeful Spirit gets that kill, and we go back the other way as it's... The pacemakers were able to kick up a big team fight goes right into the space. I mean, Luffy, yeah, Luffy did, tanked up a lot of damage, but he didn't even need to die there. He was kind of running away and then just turned right back in and died. But nice effort there by the bench to swap him out. Shadow Fiend coming up, nice, perfect timing with the axe call, attack. gets a double raise, and just some nice kills. And now it looks like Shadow Fiend's on his way toward a Eye of Scotty. Yeah, the Scotty, man. Lots of stats. Let's see here. What, what do you think it is that adds so much first? I'm not a big Shadow Fiend player, alright? Fogged. What is it about Scotty that really helps out with someone like Shadow Fiend? Is it just the slow factor and just the, the extra bit of girth with all those stats? You're really tanky. You can chase people down a lot easier. I'm not really the biggest fan, I feel like. Are you I guess more this on game the, it's. Uh, I know, I guess. <laughs> This game, no, I mean the Yules is good. It really, it's really good because you can do so much damage with the Blink Yules. But this game, he does need to be a bit tankier. And I guess this is fine because BKB is not the best. He just needs to be a bit tanky. They smoke up now, and maybe they look towards the Roche that they couldn't finish. But it looks like they actually want to scout out up and above. It'll pay off. the The Scotty will pay off really well if he gets it pretty soon. Oh yeah, getting it nice and early would certainly help out. Being able to. Eat a lot of the damage, of course, from that death block. Now, they take out the illusion, it obviously gives Wings the information that this is happening, and they beeline it towards the pit. Do they have the damage to bring down this road? Mind you, if Naga gets there, she could set it up again with a sleep, and this is a very congested This could area. be a game losing, Roche. This but could be a game losing. They do losing. have Axe on the outside. Can he interject, maybe? Make the jump happen. Axe goes down. Axe is slow on the sleep. Sleep is going to come. They still consider an engagement. That's just your lot of damage to the Now they get stunned on Axe. Axe will be dropped right in the middle of the zone play, it looks like. Now they make a move on to Han, but lots of damage on the fan. Fan could be in trouble. Fan goes down, but that's just the Aegis life. Lucky drops after throwing out the Viper Strike. That cast box into the two supports on the right hand side, and now Naga deep in the pit. Shadow Fiend unleashes the Fury, takes out Naga, goes back, and now it's going to be. Death Prophet in trouble. self Wings gets him out, and the Fire Blast comes through. They take down the Shadow Fiend. And now, Wings on the way out. They end up trading what looks like a three for two when it's all said and done, plus the Aegis life. I have to say, Wings really got a lot out of that for a late defense. Where was the Axe? During that most majority of that engagement, I feel like he was missing. He like jumped in, tried to go for a call, but was slept immediately. He just got put in a very awkward situation at that point. He was eating damage, couldn't really blink anywhere, and with the cogs being dropped, he couldn't really get in to help out his two cores that were locked in a death prison. It was very awkward. He didn't awkward. skill uh, any levels in hunger either, so he's just kind of like standing around instead of just trying to, you know, throw out some hungers and then go in afterwards. I guess he got hit by all the AoE that was going on, but yeah, he needs to be more careful with his positioning. He is a huge factor in these team fights. Yeah, and imagine that. They see an axe, it's not like, oh, let's let's just target the axe. It's like, okay, if he jumps in, doesn't get off a good call, he's not really adding a lot to the fight. He doesn't have that battle hunger to really put out any sort of side damage. It's not like it does the most damage, but it certainly can add up. 
And uh, without having that, it's just, he's relying on spins and hopefully being able to finish someone off with his ultimate. But if that's not there, he's just kind of being a body. So with that, Wings were able to get a huge fight going their way. Let's touch base with Naga, who seems to be the dark horse of this game and certainly who's trying to put the team on the back. She has that Radiance, of course, and has the boots of travel, so her early, I guess, Naga 2 belt boarded together. So it's, it's looking like a pretty good pace right here for Wings. This is opportunities where you figure that the Pacemaker kids would have the Aegis and they could start going for high ground, but that seems to be a bit difficult at this point. I think this this Naga should have a bit more farm, though. I know her teammates are trying to recover in the jungle and whatnot, but... She's a little bit behind. Uh, I think maybe just not using the illusions too well, or maybe uh, EP is using it, doing a good job of clearing them out. But she's a bit behind on just creep score in general. She's only has 170 right now, 22 minutes. But she does have her bots, Yasha, and Radiance finished up now. Every little bit counts. Yeah. She Radiance up bottom the Roche tower bay, which was is under already attack. Done. She's going to look to go into enemy territory to take away bits of that farm. Well, it looks like pacemakers are congregated towards this mid lane. But they want to kind of push Radiant the tempo again. Are Mind you, they don't have the Aegis, they don't have that extra life. Radiance bottom tower forward. is under attack. Death Prophet gets Radiance bottom lane bottom and even have to commit her molt for it. Now level two. Let's see if they opt to maybe split push bottom lane or go Dyer's back to the defense. It looks like going back to the defense seems to be the better option. Is Don's already laying in some damage from the low ground on this tier three. Radiance bottom tower. They need to be careful. Attack. Pressuring this high ground though. Anyway, they saw what happened before. Even though Wings doesn't have the best synergy with the silence and whatnot, it's still pretty devastating to get set up on like that. This is very safe right here. They're doing, I mean, the two just kind of pelt at that tier three from the low ground a little bit, chipping away. They have Vengeful nearby with the level two swap just in case things get hairy. But there's Naga cutting the creeps. Good defense mechanism right there, preventing them from getting the easy early push, plus potential yeah. backdoor protection. So they're doing a really nice job stalling out as best as possible with, with what they've been given. That's what they need to do, honestly. Like if if this Naga gets super fat. That's their best bet, but I think EP has the heroes to deal with a really farm Naga at the same time. But still, you know, if you have to deal with a Naga and a Death Prophet who is really farmed, you're going to have some trouble. But yep. this Death Prophet is, you know, he's, he's catching up. BKB Yules, if he gets like a Shiva's and a heart, he's going to be he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. And with a team that has multi-cores that are... Pretty single target, maybe raising Radiance eyes a bit. Bottom tower is under attack. Death Prophet's able to throw on a lot of extra life. Finding the Dyer's person to target becomes a bit fortified. tricky. Here. They're allowing the Naga to kind of go do what she wants, or Death Prophet's going to be able to get the most of her exorcism. They Energy do get the cliff down, though. They are getting the tower. They do get it. Right. Look shot. They're going in. Here we go. Let's just send him right back out. Found his stun. It's pressured back. Here comes Naga. Sleep. Pulls out the song. But they're not going pressing forward. They've Isolated the Viper yeah. if they want to, but it doesn't seem they want to do anything. Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, so we'll get to regroup after that. Wasn't the setup they hoped for. I guess the side of the TP. EP did a nice job playing it more patient and pulling back, and they might just pull back all together. Got the Raxes exposed, though. I guess, yeah, they're just going to wait for the creep. They still have Death Prophet's ultimate and everything at the ready. So this is their best shot, plus a full 10-second BKB on Blink. As well. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Looks like they want to continue. All right. Nugget's got illusions up really soon. Illusions out. No more song though. So as they move in, they pop out the Crimson Guard and take a bit of that illusion damage. Oh, no, the, the cask. cask. This it cask is. locking there very nicely. Draw the Yule. It looks like they're going to go into Shadow. Oh, big call. Jump in. Big call. And Death Ward on the return, though. Gets a one from one play. Buyback comes out for the Death Prophet as they focus fire. Lucky. Stacks the to drop right on the staircase. Bench is taken down. Crypto going to be there. Now, right clicks come out. Shadow Fiend will take down the clockwork. Going toe to toe. Also drops down the Witch Doctor. Ends up being what looks like a three for two with two buybacks right now on the side of Wings just to pull out this defense. They do defend out the racks. It does cost them a pretty penny. Though. Yeah. Naga's able to pick up a little bit of farm. No kills, unfortunately. A couple assists. Clockwork ended up getting both of the kills there. 
But either way, ends up stalling the game a bit more, which is what she needs. She's about to have her mantis style, which will help a lot. And whoa! That's a full pipe picked up for the ogre? Pipe? That's an item people don't really care for anymore. Especially on an ogre. I feel like when you go more like maybe greedy style ogre, you want to get an agnum, or. He could basically basically have an ax if he didn't buy the urn, the arcanes, and the pipe. What does the he pipe just went do straight here? for it. I have no clue, man. The requiem, static storm, a little bit of magic damage, I suppose. I don't know. That's odd. Yeah. Haven't seen that something like that in a while. But either way, my it's just about delaying, I guess, for the high ground for Naga. So we'll see here. Smoke now coming out. Maybe hoping to lead things off with a good pick with axe leading out the charge. So we got two of the three components for his BKB. We haven't scouted anyone yet. Now venture to wings territory. Uh -oh. This could be a big jump. Three this could scout be a four pop. Five. Fakes out the hook once, fakes it twice. Doesn't commit quite yet. Rock it on. Timid play from both sides. Very timid. You can see the nerves. One bad fight, you could lose mid racks from wings. And EP, they lose a big fight. They allow Naga to get that next item and. Much more of a struggle trying to even trade and then you risk potential trades on side lanes, so. Yeah, she just needs to cut the waves, which is what she's trying to do here. She ends up cutting this wave here. There's a catapult though, which makes it a bit unfortunate. But Manta style comes up, sends two more illusions, cuts the wave again. And this is this is exactly what she needs to do. Just constantly cut those waves. Don't let them push up on that high ground and you're good to go. Just keep buying time for your team. Your team, Team Fire, very familiar with the play style of Naga, Ush, big Naga player. Yeah, he loves that. Obnoxious. Crap. It's kind of disgusting. But the one problem is that, you know, the Naga is doing a decent job at all this, but she actually returns to the base just now, and the whole team for Wings is just sitting in the base. They're not really doing anything else while Naga's trying to make space. Yeah, you can feel it's a lot of pressure on the Naga, and if they give all that farm to Naga, there's, there's scraps kind of left for them. And you get those scraps maybe towards oh, your death yeah. profit first. And then your supports are kind of last on the food chain as far as farm. And you already committed to something like a pipe. Dyer's top tower is, is under attack. your stopping point until you're able to go on the other side and maybe grab a couple of those tier two. She's too weak. It's the problem. Like 1200 HP death profit. Vax gets on her and just add instantly. They have no defensive Dyer's capability. Top tower has fallen. Yeah, BKB's not going to help you against that axe either. BKB is also just Radiant an interesting grab to You already got a swap and an axe on the other side. Dyer's top tower Viper is Strike is a bit questionable, but for now they're going to try to make the best of it. High ground pressure coming in here from BP. And like to look for the favorites nice this one. Cogs, Death Ward. Synergy, Stack Storm to stop the Death Ward though from the Disruptor. Nicely done right there, but they already burst down, take out that Disruptor. Now Ventral Spirit getting swallowed alive from the Ghost. That Supports pot. are dead. They sweep forward. Big stop from Axe against the Sphinx. They take out Death Prophet. He's still alive and good, but now will be dropped One double versus four. Naga. Fan versus manning three. up right now. There's Late the sleep. He should be going down here anyway though. Yeah. Yeah. Fan and they make it a five Radiant's for two trade. Another Feeling successful right. defense for Wings. One they very, very much needed. Man, Naga sleeping late got his own ogre kill. There could have probably been a four for one there. Or a five for one there. But uh, either way, they do end up cleaning up. Naga gets good farm. Witch Doctor gets some much needed farm because he's broke on that Witch Doctor. Nowhere near that Axe. Naga's able Radiant's to pressure this bottom tower, tower now. Got some time to just Radiant's probably finish up his heart if you would like to. And, yeah, I mean, overall, just really nice plays. Yep. I mean, both sides tried to do their best they could the X. Got a really nice blade mail, insta killed the Death Prophet, basically, but yeah. Naga's just getting a little bit too big. Oh, Glimpse. Glimpse back, no song. Well, he could probably kill them here, though. They need to be careful. Oh, yeah, under just, attack. They're, they're pretty flimsy. He's got to walk away from this one. They needed more help. Yellow. He's not. He's not risking it. Had to walk forward, didn't get a TP, must have not had a good time, but... Incoming! That, that could have been, that defense could have been the start to this oh, Naga this being able to take it. But might actually end up going down. They scouted him. But, oh man, he got him! That's second Riptide! That's just the worst feeling oh, ever. As a support going against the That's Naga. That's why you just leave. Just, you just leave. You just can't do, it's just like, disgusting. There's, you're just like so flimsy. Oh, he's got Thundershock. Right right yeah, He's got to feel the burn. Literally feeling the burn. Turns back and snares right there. Riptide out. Desperation. Full staff. 
Oh, gets the call, but not on Naga. Now the Cogs are able to finish off that Central Spirit. Now Axie, a bunch of the damage from Naga. And it's going to be a double kill for the Clockwork. Wings. Looking really good at this point. They take back-to-back -back fights, back-to-back -back skirmishes, and now it's feeling a bit finicky. Naga. Pull it back. Gaming. Yeah. What a hero. Oh my god, look at the gold she's got. 4500. Racked up a ton. Viper puts up a full BKB. Shadow Fiend finishes up a Manta after the Scotty. I don't like this. He doesn't really do any damage. They have no damage now. How the hell are they gonna focus down this Naga ever? I, I really don't like that. Still like the field of opportunities. Slowly closing. At this point for EP, they better hope for what is I imagine being a high ground defense now on their side. Because things are only going to get better at this point for Wings as long as they are able to take team fights. Now they could just start going for those tier twos. They're even bringing more gold in from what was once pretty poor support. So now going to be able to throw together a good farm. And Ogre with all those tower takedowns, he will have an Agnum Scepter, so he becomes a big problem. Witch Doctor can get well, whatever the hell he wants, his own Agnums, I imagine. And then that Death Ward, which has already been pretty viable in a lot of these fights, becomes even better. Things just seem to be developing really well for Wings, and at this point. I don't think Energy Pacemaker are going to be able to catch up with this one. Oof, narrow Ooh, miss right shot. there. Grab the mark. And, yeah. But Very Shadow Fiend, I don't know what he's going to be able to offer to go against both Death Prophet and Naga. Yeah. He just, I mean, he has no magic resistance whatsoever. He can get abused by the cask, abused by all the stuns, lockdown, etc. that Wings do have. And on top of that, he has not very so much, not so much damage. So if the fight persists too long for Wings, it's just purely in their favor. So with them, it's the ball in their court, and their ball to, to drop. I suppose they'll just have their Naga continue to farm up until she's reached her final form. She's got her her heart now. So if you thought the illusions were hard enough to break down before, now it's a real well pain in the ass. So more pressure on the EP to try to pull it back, but they are... What I imagine going to be near desperation mode at this point to try to find their own way. I mean, what do you do? If you're on the side of EP, do you pull out the yellow smoke, try to find pickoffs? Do you just itemize as long as you can and hope for a successful that defense, maybe in the high ground and a turnaround at that point? What, what can you do at this point when you see Naga being able to really barrel out of control? They wow. need to just try to get some... Uh... <laughs> I'm just thinking. I, I, know. Just, I don't know. Yeah. They just, they kind of screwed their opportunity trying to break high ground so many times. They're just behind now by, I don't know what, almost 5,000? 5, 5,000 gold. This Nog is just able to, you know, pressure lanes, keep the lanes, keep everything on their side of the map. And yeah, it's really hard for EP to go for the opportunities for the pickoffs. Even though they have this axe and whatnot, their Shadow Fiend just doesn't really dish out too much damage, even with the Venjora. He's only doing like what? 270 per hit with some minus armor. That's not that much at this point in the game versus a Naga who has 3k HP and 21 armor. Smokes out from Wings. They're going for their oh, own no, pick. Viper. Luffy. Oh boy. Immediate BKB, Death Ward. Gonna do a little bit of tickling. Right now they really just kind of swarm on the Luffy I, here. I think he could have TP'd instantly after the net. Waiting for now. And does draw out the, a couple of the ultimates, but they get what they want, and with this exorcism, which, mind you, is now at level 3, she's level 17, are going to be able to segue beautifully right towards this mid-tier 2 tower. And they'll be able to clean up a couple objectives. Shadow Team trying to split push top lane a bit, throwing out the Manta style, but now has to get back. Lift going to be popped here. Just uh, Energy Pacemaker's kind of watching as their tower structure is dropped. He does move in, goes to blank, pops his BKB here. Really not a whole lot. They pull out the sleep, but the BKB keeps them awake, but now they're just going to easily Radiance chop them on down before the BKB is even concluded. And now they look back towards Han. Han, the Cog's able to walk away from this one. The Wings moving forward quickly. Slash down the Vengeful Spear. Supports cannot stand a chance. Static Storm does catch on three with a kinetic field. Luffy is back. Throws out the mech, trying to get out the damage, but he is eating a lot himself. And they are just trying to stay towards the base and on the high ground, but it's not going to be enough. Wings have already taken three names with only two left. This is going to look like a risky defense. I say that, they actually pull back. I guess it looks like Wings are going to take that victory and walk away with those earnings. Yep, they don't even need to push their advantage too much at this point.
Clock's gonna be toward his eggs. Witch Doctor is basically toward his eggs as well. Ogre, if he wants to, on his way too. Naga, another 3k in the bank. Everything's looking pretty disastrous right now for EP. They just can't really fight. These fresh BKBs they just got out. The Axe just used his 10 second BKB, the Viper as well, and you see what happens. The Naga just sleeps and they focus fire the person who BKBs. It was really nice plays by Wings, and now Naga finishes up the Fusel. And yeah, they're, gonna just, they're just finishing up items all over the place. This Death Prophet who had zero gold about, what, seven, eight minutes ago, now has a full heart on top of his Yule's BKB. It's ridiculous. Uh, wealth of farm coming their way, and it almost worked out nicely to this point for Wings. They had, it was the pacemakers who had the upper hand, but with that small rubber band factor, I know the numbers have been changed a lot, it allowed Wings to really get the most out of those two back-to-back -back team fights. That one big successful defense in the mid lane was really the tipping point to allow Wings to be able to really flourish in this game. And now they hold control and just more or less tightening that noose. But here we go. The smoke going to be coming out. Feels like a, not a desperate kind of a play, but they really want to get something done with this. As they muscle their way through the illusions. They are going right for the top. They draw it out right there. Naga is already by the side shop, and she's just out of here. So this is not going to be a smoke going anywhere. Unfortunately, they're for EP. Bummer. Yep, he's just grouping up with his team. Do they want? It looks like they want to smoke out on the side of wings, and yeah, they do. Ogre went for a blink, not for an axe. All right. I guess, mind you, fire blast was nerfed down in its radius a little bit, so. I guess now he could definitely just kind of get Ooh. in there and get it done. I like this pickup by the Death Prophet. He went to Vitality Boost and then he went for uh, full Shivas instead of the Heart. I like that a lot more than the Heart. And Luffy! Oh no, getting engaged on. Three times multi just to add insult to injury there. They sent back the Ogre with the Glimpse. Hook shot is not going to connect, but that's a Viper who's already dead with no buyback for 50 seconds. So now, Blink just pulls out the Exorcism and they go right towards the high ground. Naga illusions and all. This tier 3 really doesn't stand a chance. And it looks like the energy pacemakers are not going to be able to offer a real strong defense. Dark moves forward, desperate to try to lead something off, and there's going to be a swap back and call. Let's jump forward, and they drop the cogs. Get the hell away from my Death Prophet, he says, but they're able to take down that axe, and this is Wings' opportunity to finish the deal. Shadow Thief throws out. Huge ultimate does burst down the clockwork, but it's only their first takedown. Now they focus back. Fan desperate throws up the raise. Gets Ogre as well. The last hurrah for him. He does get blown up at the end. Double kill for Naga. Rax is exposed and they're going to be forced to pull out the buyback. Now Shadow Fiend looking to rotate back in. Disruptor here as well. Still no static storm though. It's going to be used. Man's going to be split. Avoiding the silence right there. But they are able to get that Rax. And with that, Wings walk away. Or fly away, I suppose. Can they though? Very nice close back. Brings Blink right in, and now the right clicks from Van. But there's that Naga, able to secure another kill, another takedown on the Disruptor. So with that, it's a hot mess. A couple of buybacks are forced out from EP. Wings get their racks, they lose a couple. Naga still lives and has 4.8k. Still just all good for Wings Gaming. I really like the way the Naga's been using his sleeps, though. He hasn't been like saving it for Disengage. As soon as the Axe initiates with his Blink and BKB, He's just sleeping, and they're focusing focusing him entirely and just killing him right away. So he's not really able to do much. He's just getting killed instantly after he initiates. So it's just a really nice counter-initiate factor with the uh, Naga. And yeah, they're just benefiting a lot. They end up getting the racks there, forcing... Was it one or two buybacks? Definitely one buyback, buyback on the Shadow Fiend. Uh, Viper yeah. didn't have one. And uh, maybe Venge? I don't know. When I led to the fight recap, it was already too late, of course. So, but yeah, it looked like just me. just the Shadow Fiend bought yeah. back, but still, force a buyback. You know, take the racks. Your carry lives. Unfortunately, Death Prophet ended up going down, but I'm pretty sure they got more than what they wanted. Roche is going to be res respawning soon. Naga should be able to keep lanes pressured out, and yeah, Naga is going to be six slotted in the next two to three minutes which is going to be really hard for EP to really even kill the illusions. Yeah, looks like she's going for that butterfly, and without an MKB in sight for EP, I don't really know what the answer would be for this Naga on trying to bring her down. She's already pretty meaty as it is, but now it's that much harder even to get your own bit of punishment in. And Shadow Fiend now going to be working on just one life. 
Uh, Wings, if they want, could even slow play this even more and wait for the Aegis, but it looks like they move forward. They catch out Luffy again, and with that blink, they get the stun. Forces out the DKP. The Lips is going to send Ogre back. Now Naga, with that Death War, going to be dropped out as he has his own BKB. Luffy, a huge damage axe comes in. Trying to lock him in place. Big damage. Naga gets out the song, but the BKB is allowed him to finish the job. The return of the Pacemaker boys as they manage to clear out three. They lose two, though. But that has been a peaking fight for them that they have desperately needed, and maybe Wings should have considered slow playing that a bit more. They come up short and trying to go for a pickoff there on the Luffy. Yeah, I don't know. They just ran in with, th like, what, three heroes? They still should be fighting together 100% because they are ahead, but, you know, fighting ver five versus three, not really the best idea. They end up killing two, which isn't so bad, and... It, the EP should be able to push off of that. This is not the time for you to feel overconfident at any point and comfortable. So, a lot of money on the line. These kids are already going to be walking away with a decent chunk of change even for just participating. But the difference between each of these positions and even making it onto the main stage is just so dramatic. But now you're allowing an opportunity. It's EP going to the high ground at this point. Rogue Shot comes to the back line. And they're going to quickly take out that Disruptor. Now they look for the secondary support, Ventral Spirit, but they are getting damage onto their racks. Meanwhile, the Ogre, Ventral Spirit still going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the left-hand side with a pipe. Being popped, Ventral on the way out. He's still in hot pursuit, able to finally finish it off. Man, that was some support on support hate happening right there. But they finally catch each other, and they're not able to do much to those racks. They'll heal up. It does force out Death Prophet's Exorcism ult, but I think EP we got a bit too desperate trying to make that push happen. I think they kind of had to, though. Yeah. At this point. They kind of forced into that position, and the o it just, you know, Ogre was like, you know, I'll just buy back. My back doesn't mean anything. My items don't really mean anything at this point. So him using a buyback basically means nothing, and yeah, they gain so much out of it. They get the kills, stop the push, and now, yeah, they're on the, they're, they're forcing the advantage now. Even though DP doesn't have ult, they're going to be able to keep EP on their side of the map, not able for them to press be pressured against. Fan has got his Demon Edge. He is trying to quickly throw together the MKB. I mentioned his buyback still down. It is for about three minutes, so he'll probably just pick it up as soon as he can, if he can. But the timing might not work for him. Meanwhile, Wings are going to go and secure the Roche. Having this extra life certainly helps. I'm thinking they're going to probably give it to Blink here. And then this Death Prophet can really kind of go off the rails. And Shadow Fiend needs a full other item, though. He really needs, like, he needs MKB and a crit at this point. Or something along those lines. But even like, then, sure, he picked uh, up. Yeah, a lot. Focus yeah, fire just one target. target. It, he picked up a late BKB, but it's like, you know. Is that really gonna do so much for you? He, I think he needs, like, BKB, or, uh, Satanic, a crit, and a MKB somehow, but, you know, it's so hard to really fit those items in with the build that he went. Needs more. More item slots you can purchase. Maybe get a couple more items in there. Uh, at this point, this might be out of his out of his reach. But anything can happen. We had a bit of sloppy play there before from Wings trying to make engagements happen without their full support. And it wasn't a throw, but it was the three, maybe of a three-two-two. So we'll see. Wings though. Probably going to look to go more composed as they try to put a lid on this one. Just want to remind everyone for just tuning in today. It's day one of DAC. It's the wild card matchups where we're looking between these six teams, the top two that are going to be making it into the DAC itself, the main stage, while uh, the other four will be unfortunately done after day one and walking away. They can still hang out in Shanghai and watch the games and have a good time, and they get uh, about $11,000 in rising, but their journey will end as far as tournament play. And we have five best of ones happening here between three different channels. So after this, we'll just move right into our next matchup here. And we'll see here as Wings now pushing down from the north. We'll be able to secure this tier two, which is damn near complete. And then they're going to make another break for the base. And if they're Radiant's successful, top this game will is under probably attack. come to a quick close. And for EP, they better figure out what the hell they want to do for a defense. Tower has fallen. Yeah, Naga farmed up her buyback. Looks like Wings are ready to push. So they're just going to, they should just send Illusion slowly on the tower, try to whittle it down a bit. Maybe send him on some of the supports. Just be obnoxious in general. Just making sure all the other lanes are pushed in. That way they try to split apart the energy pacemakers a bit inside their own base. 
Naga doing the best for splitting out those illusions. Now you're like Axe at this point in the game, and you were once dominant before. Mind you, this was the game he had those that triple dunk to really lead things off for EP to what could have been a beautiful mid-game period and closing out before Naga could reach this critical mass point, but that opportunity is gone, and now they have to just hope for a way to kind of push this out. But I guess the nice thing is Axe is pretty good at wave clearing, so I guess they got that, but they'll need a lot more. Not as good as Naga. Not as good as a six slot Naga. Better. Critical Mass Naga versus Critical Mass Medusa. Who do you think takes it? Probably Medusa. I feel like those two are probably the, the top two if they're able to kind of get to this point. At least in my opinion. Gyro maybe in there. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a Raker holder. Depends on for what. Oh, Naga getting focused down a bit. Oh, where's that glimpse? Doesn't want to use it. Casually walking through the creep wave. Is. Well, he meant to dodge it. Oh, he doesn't even go for the man to dodge. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that. Oh, no. He oh, goes Lord. down. Oh, my. That is the? not what you want to happen. Man to dodge, what, yeah. What just happened? There's a small time frame window for the man to dodge, but. He didn't even go for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, wings are like, well, with that, we got to get the hell back and, and wait a bit. But what What did they really hand over with that? They uh, give a bounty, small one. 398, but the rubber band's there a bit as well. And now MKB complete on fan, and he's got 1,800 gold fogged. And I imagine he'll look to save a bit of that, of course, for his buyback, but he does get that extra item here. And, uh, I don't know. This is the second time we've seen Wings kind of do something uh, a little bit out of their element. Yeah. That was odd. Disruptor halfway to Ags now. Uh... Axe picks up a decent amount, Shadowfiend as well. They could probably press, press their advantage a little bit, but they have to be very careful of the buyback. Ooh, Axe was scouting out, trying to get old DP. Moves forward, does not get the call there. The quick reaction blink out from Ogre. I'm not going to allow him to get that pick. And here we go again. Energy Pacemaker's back in while Naga's down. It's too tempting to not pull out a buyback. If they feel comfortable enough. They have the glyph. They can stall out for Naga to come back. Uh, the effort there. Bockler jumps out, disruptor, gonna be isolated on the left hand side, and they immediately focus down the ogre. Death War gonna be dropped from the high ground, doing reasonable damage, but still trying to break through. Death Prophet could be in trouble. Here comes Naga, gets the song off. We'll uh -oh. save out Death Prophet, and now it's Wings going back, looking towards the energy pacemakers and able to take them apart. Double drop, triple drop. And make it all of them down. Energy pacemakers hit the deck. Wings come out big. Now they parade themselves down the mid lane and go for the base. That's the game. No buyback needed. Finishes up his defusal too. So yeah, Naga completely full stacked with a buyback and boots of travel. And sleep will be up very shortly. I don't think there's any way for EP to defend. Axe Viper, Shadowfiend has his buyback right there, just in time. Here's the lead in. No song still, 12 seconds, but Axe is eating so much damage, he's the one that's going to be ripped down. Lucky go next, down. oh my god, lots of damage there, double kill. Man, the last hurrah, the last breath of life here for the energy pacemakers. Those man take one support, but that is got to do it. That point wings. That's a rough way to lose. Yeah. Very close. Very close opportunity. Good pick right there on Naga to help things out. But, oh, there's the cheese. And now Naga's instantly full. Game of mistakes. Whoever makes more mistakes ends up just costing themselves the game. And yeah. GG comes out from EP. Just, you know, looks like they had everything on lockdown, like you were saying with the triple dog. They had a good chance going into the mid game, but trying to break that high ground so early ends up just, you know, biting them in the butt. That's it. Biting them in the butt. So wings. <laughs> going to be getting your first victory here. We were curious how these two teams were going to be able to perform. I agree with you. Maybe a bit of nerves, a bit of shakiness there from both sides. You know, reasonable draft thrown together, but it's going to come down to execution. So we'll hopefully chalk it up to a warm, warm up for them. As we finish out game number one here, we're going to go ahead and quickly hop on out and look out for game number two, which on this channel is going to be 
Hyperglory team going to be taking on Wings. So Wings will be back with their already one win and see if they can take it to Hyperglory team. Fogged joining me on the co-casting. Appreciate it, bud. You can catch him over on his Twitter at FogDota, myself at CoddleGuy. We'll go ahead and throw it to a brief break and be back for game number two. Apparently I'm RTC, though. So. Oh, yeah. And apparently I'm PyCat, and he has a good impersonation. So it's whatever no, you I want, folks. It. It's whatever you want. All right. We'll be back. 